the four-time African Women's Player of the Year, stands head and shoulders above the rest of the continent after wholly delivering on the immense promise she showed at the youth level. Her technical quality sets her apart from many of her rivals. The first African woman to play in England's Women's Super League. She's a Sisat Oshuala. She's a queen, a warrior, and at the young age of 25, she has already left her mark on the game of football. We are now in stoppage time. Go! Before we get the ball rolling, go ahead and click on the like button if you ever heard of the Sisa Oshuala, and make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a video. A Sisa Oshuala was born on October 9, 1994 in Ikorodu, Nigeria. Her first taste of soccer came when she was just a little girl in school playing six-a-side matches with her boy classmates. The boys always used to say to her, don't go to the front, just stay at the back, just kick the balls out. You can't score goals, you can't dribble past defenders. And then that one day came where her team made it to the finals and she decided she had enough of the back. She dribbled past two or three players and scored the only goal of the game. She remembers after the game saying to those boy classmates, look at that, you didn't believe in me, but look at what I can do. When you have this determination, and people see this determination in you, eventually they have no choice but to give you the support you need to get where you want to go. As the Seaside continued to grow and develop and dominate the boys, the football bug had officially bitten her and she realized that this was the only thing that she wanted to do. In 2009, at the age of 15, she joined the youth club at FC Robo and eventually would make her way into the first team for the Queens. Her performances with FC Robo led to a CSAT being selected for Nigeria's team for the 2012 Women's Under 20 World Cup at the age of 17. She didn't think she was even gonna get the ball passed to her at the tournament. She thought she was there just to be making up the numbers for the team because she was so young. Oshuala came on as a substitute in the 76th minute of Nigeria's opener against Korea. Her performance for those final 14 minutes were so impressive that she started every subsequent match at the tournament, helping Nigeria get to the semifinals. Then and there, she learned that when you're given an opportunity, you gotta give it your best. She's quoted saying, you might not see them, but someone is always watching. It was a great lesson for me. It's something I've carried from Japan into every match I play now. Asisa's unexpected performance in the Women's Under 20 World Cup put her on the map as one of the brightest potential talents on the continent. This new hype warranted her to move to one of the most successful Nigerian women's clubs, Rivers Angels FC. In 2014, Asisa would again make a commanding appearance on the international stage at the Under 20 World Cup in Canada. She wanted to do better. She wanted people to come out, not only to watch the team, but to come watch the girl who is determined, the girl who is always ready to give her best. Perhaps one of the most important moments took place against England in their final group stage game of that tournament. Locked at 1-1, England's Bethany Mead missed the penalty in the 53rd minute. Just six minutes later, Oshuala was brought down in the box and given the same chance to snatch the lead. It was a crucial penalty for the team. They had to score. They had to win that game to qualify for the next round. It wasn't planned that she was gonna take the penalty. They had a penalty taker, but Asisa could see that the penalty taker was a little bit shaken in the opportunity. She walked up to her and said, I'll take it for you. She wants the challenge. She always remembers thinking, I'm the veteran one. I'm the one that played at the last Under 20 World Cup. I should be able to step up and do it for my team. <laughs> and she did that. She stepped up to the penalty spot, buried the ball in the back of the net and helped Nigeria win the game. She was named the best player and was the top goal scorer of that tournament with seven goals as she led Nigeria to a second place finish. 2014 is also the year that Oshuala would get her first senior women's national team action. 
She was a part of the squad that won the 2014 African Championships. She was also named best player and second top goal scorer of the tournament. 2014 proved to be a monumental year for Oshuala and she capped it off by winning her first African Woman Footballer of the Year award. With the success that Asisat made on the international stage and the caliber of play that she exhibited back at home in the local league, Oshuala was able to join Liverpool Ladies in January of 2015, becoming the first woman born in Africa to play in the England Women's Super League. Liverpool's manager Matt Beard called her one of the best young players in the world. Oshuala unfortunately missed two months of the 2015 season with a knee injury as defending champions Liverpool's had a bad season finishing seventh out of eight teams. In the summer of 2015, Asisat made her debut in the Women's World Cup, scoring the second goal for Nigeria in their 3-3 draw against footballing powerhouse Sweden. She says the Women's World Cup was something completely different. She recalls never having experienced playing for such big crowds. She remembers having to reprimand herself a few times as well. She kept having to remind herself not to go on the pitch and just start looking at my idols and not play her football. She says, I kept refocusing on this thought. I'm going to go there and play the game I have inside me. I want to be an inspiration to others. So whenever I'm given the opportunity to represent my country, I have to give it my best. Nigeria was unfortunately in one of the toughest groups in that tournament, having to play Sweden, Australia, and the US. So the Super Falcons failed to make it out of the group stage. Even though she failed to take her club back to the championship that they had won the year prior, and she was unable to lead her nation out of the group stage at the World Cup, her talent was so obviously blaring that she still won the BBC Women's Footballer of the Year Award in 2015. In January 2016, Liverpool reported that a transfer bid from Arsenal Ladies had activated the release clause in Oshuala's contract. Upon making the move to Arsenal, she would only spend a year with the club, scoring two goals in 11 appearances. That summer, a seaside would again be on the international stage, leading the Super Falcons to their second straight gold medal at the 2016 African Women's Championship, where she won the golden boot. These amazing performances led to her being awarded the African Women Footballer of the Year Award for the second straight time. In February of 2017, Oshuala signed for Chinese club Dalian Kuangjian FC, where she seemed to find her groove. She scored 23 goals for the club that season, which won her the Chinese Women's Super League Top Goal Scorer Award. Her play in China led to her being recognized back at home as, guess what? She won her third straight African Women Footballer of the Year Award. In the summer of 2018, Oshuala would again lead the Super Falcons to their third straight gold medal in the 2018 African Women's Championship. Her miraculous performances of this year warranted Spanish club FC Barcelona to sign Oshuala in January 2019 on a loan deal until the end of the season. She helped Barcelona to a runners-up finish in Spain's Primera Division and she scored Barcelona's only goal in the 4-1 defeat to Lyon in the 2019 UEFA Women's Champions League final. In May of that same year, Barcelona announced Oshuala's full transfer to the club and extension until 2022. Asisat was a key player for Nigeria at the France World Cup in 2019, helping the Super Falcons to a round of 16 finish. Her group stage goal against Korea, which showcased her speed, technique, and balance, was nominated for France's 2019 goal of the tournament. Her stellar play would lead her to winning African Women's Football of the Year again for the fourth time. She's just 25 years old and is already one of the most decorated players in the game. She hasn't even hit her prime yet, so it will be a joy to watch and see what else she will accomplish over the coming years. 
and she wants many other young African girls to follow in her footsteps. Oshawala's Football for Girls Africa Project is a clinic and tournament for young girls in Nigeria that Asisa has been putting on for the past five years under her Asisa Oshawala Foundation. The foundation aims to continue mentoring young girls to embrace education in their pursuit of success through sports. Asisat plans to train 5,000 girls on the basics of soccer. Three outstanding girls at each event are picked and awarded scholarships to play and study abroad. This is more than just a game. It can change people's lives for the better, and we here at SUSU are dedicated to telling more rags to riches stories like Asisa Oshawala's and creating new rags to riches stories by nurturing and exposing the footballing talent of the future. Make sure you click on the like button if you've learned something new in this video, and definitely subscribe to the channel. We will be releasing a new video on a different legend each and every Monday. Don't miss out. Click on the link in the bio to go to sususoccer.com and purchase some apparel to be a part of the development of footballing infrastructure in Africa. Thanks for watching. I'm Cordo. That was Stoppage Time.